The second edition of the design inference deserves to get a better reception than the first. Whether it will, that remains to be seen. The second edition of the design inference deserves to get a better reception than the first. Whether it will, uh, that remains to be seen. I'm optimistic. I think it's a much stronger book than the first. I think uh, first edition was a, uh, in a sense, statistical and philosophical monograph. This one is more of a straight up statistical and computer science book. And computer science in the sense that specified complexity is a uh, statistical slash computational notion. So uh, I think it holds up much better. The notion of specified complexity is developed there is, uh, I think, rock solid. And I think uh, it's going to be very hard to refute it. Uh, another thing that makes me optimistic that the book is going to be well received is just the, the sort of advance endorsements that I've, I've seen, just the, the initial buzz about it. And so for instance, on the book cover, we highlight Sergio Kleinerman's endorsement of the book. Sergio Kleinerman is a world-class mathematician at uh, Princeton University, uh, endowed chair, uh, and he says basically no scientist can afford not to read the book. Uh, he calls the first edition a classic, which is nice, you know. But uh, uh, the, so, but I think the second edition goes well beyond it. So, uh, so I think the we're. We're in good shape. I, I think it's much more defensible uh, than the first edition. There were things that were, you know, just required further clarification. I think we've really dotted the I's, crossed the T's, uh, and we've made the connections to evolutionary biology, uh, I think, uh, explicit and shown how the, these methods apply there. We don't lay it out in full detail in the sense we're giving biologists the tools to apply this method. So uh, I'm optimistic, you know, but you, uh, you know, it's, you look at, I mean, the, the intelligent design movement has certainly made a lot of inroads. There are places in the world where it really is quite well accepted. It remains highly controversial in the U.S. I think there's still a lot of people uh, in the mainstream academy that want to see it, you know, go down in flames. But there, there, I'm also getting signs from younger generation thinkers where it's like, you know, they may not have nailed it down, but at least they're raising some interesting questions that we need to be asking. So the sort of village atheism, Darwinism of Richard Dawkins doesn't seem to be quite as uh, prevalent as it used to be.